Hey guys, this is Vikas here from We Are Genius and today I am with the second tutorial of Arduino series where I will be talking about how to access the GPIO pins of Arduino. So if you have not checked my first video about getting started with Arduino, you can check it right over here. So today we will see how to use the GPIO pins of Arduino and how to access those for particular purposes like digital input output and using the analog in pins for analog inputs and using the PWM pins for analog output. So be with me guys, let's get started. Guys, before going to GPIO programming, I would like to say that Arduino comes with a default serial monitor which can be used to debug certain applications running on Arduino. Like uh, it can be useful when you are having some applications that puts like reads some data from inputs or in from sensors and you don't have any device to see the data actual value whatever you are reading. So there you can simply print the data into the serial console. And that can be seen over here using this serial monitor. So to start with that, you just need to define serial dot begin with the baud rate. So let's say I start with nine six double zero, and whenever you are opening this serial monitor, okay, I am not connected with any Arduino right now, so it's showing me some error. It's not available. Okay, so after you connect your Arduino, just click over this icon and whenever you get the window having the serial monitor, don't forget to set the baud rate over there in the left hand corner and that should be equal to this baud rate. Otherwise, you see some garbage values. And to put some data from Arduino to the serial monitor, you need to write serial dot print ln. So what it does basically is prints each data passed with this function into a new line on the serial monitor. Okay, that's all for serial. Let's start with digital input. So to use any GPIO pin of Arduino as digital input, we need to define the particular pin mode for that pin. So to define a pin as input, or you can say digital input, you need to write pin mode, the pin number, whichever you want, and it can be defined as input. Okay. And one thing over here is whenever you are using any pin as input, you don't want the pin to be in unknown state. For that, we generally use pull ups or pull down. And as you know, Arduino. Or the Admega chip which Arduino uses comes with internal pull ups. So to activate those, you can write input pull up. So this makes the internal pull up activated. And it comes handy when you don't want to solder your external pull up for pull downs, you can use external resistors. It doesn't support pull down. To read a detail pin, I can simply write int x equals to digital read and the pin number. Digital read returns the state of the pin. If it is high, it returns us 1 and if it is low, it returns us 0. Guys, you can see over here, whenever we are accessing any digital pin or any pin of Arduino, we are always referring with some numbers. And suppose you have started with pin number 6 and in the in between, you thought of like using the pin number 5. So then you need to change the pin number 5 everywhere inside your code and it becomes difficult if you have a large code. So to make it easier, we can simply define int whatever pin name you want to give it like I say it my input pin. Then equals to particular pin number. And over here in every functions, I can replace with the particular pin name. So next let's see how to make 
a particular Arduino pin as digital output. So over here in input we can simply replace with output and over here we can simply write digital write pin number with the state that we want to make the pin like i or if you want to make it low you can simply write low now if you want to read a particular analog pin of Arduino like it contains 8 analog pins from A0 to A7 we just simply don't need any like more definition over here those are already input pins and over here you simply need analog read and the particular pin number like let's say I want to read A0 the analog read function returns us the sample counts and those sample counts if you want like whatever voltage is present on the Arduino if you want to know that you need to convert it into the particular voltage to convert it you can use the inbuilt function map so let's say I want to get the voltage in I can use map it takes 5 parameters like what is the sample counts what is the minimum uh, ADC duration maximum ADC duration then the range you want to be it in like for my case I wanted 0 to 5 one more important thing is whenever you are working with analog input you need to provide the VREF by default Arduino considers the default DCC voltage as the area voltage like for 5 volt Arduino it's 5 volt for 3.3 volt one it's 3.3 volt and let's say you are interested in providing your own reference voltage you can simply write analog reference and you can write external ok now whatever voltage you provide into the array pin that is the reference voltage for the IDC so now let's check how to make analog output from Arduino to output analog values you can use the PWM pin presents in the Arduino so for that we don't need anything in setup over here you can simply write analog write and the particular pin the PW, it, it should have to be the PWM pin then values ranging from 0 to 255 so 0 gives us the minimum voltage or 0 at the output and 255 gives us the maximum voltage of the Arduino like if you are using 5 volt it will give you 5 volt and if you are using 3.3 volt you will get 3.3 volt at the particular pin and in, in between values it just gives you the map value of the same range Okay, guys, that's all with GPIOs. Thank you. Hey guys, it's me once again, and uh, hope you have enjoyed this particular video. And if so, please hit the thumbs up button and put your comments down below. So this is this was all about like GPIO pins of Arduino, and next time I'll be talking about serial port of Arduino. So be with me and hit that subscribe button to get the latest updates in your inbox. Thank you. Thanks for watching.